So in the last video, we built this uh, circuit with uh, an LED and a resistor. And the we were using this resistor to limit the current through the LED uh, so, that, so that the LED would only draw um, you know, the 20 milliamps uh, of current, and, and, it would, and the resistor would drop uh, any excess voltage. Uh, so the LED would, would, only, would only operate at the, at the 1.9 or, or 2 volts that it requires. And we were connected up to this um, you know, laboratory power supply that allowed us to adjust the voltage with, with quite a bit of precision. But now that we have this resistor in here, we, we don't need that, um, that precise voltage source anymore. And we can, we can look at some other options, which, which is great if you want to build this at home and you don't happen to have a very expensive power supply. So let me make a little bit more room here. And one of the other options, or, or the most convenient option maybe, is, is a battery. So this is just a simple 9-volt battery. And again, because we saw with a, a resistor, particularly this, this is a 1,000-ohm or 1-kilo-ohm resistor, um, we, can, we can put quite a bit more voltage in here, and the resistor will drop the excess voltage. Um, and so the easy way to do this is with one of these little, um, one of these little battery snaps here. And so the battery just snaps into here, and then you can, you can connect this to the circuit. And so we'll connect um, just the same way, the negative side here and the positive side here. Um, and that corresponds to the, the way that the LED is, is connected. And then if we connect the battery, the LED lights up. So pretty simple. Um, and, you, and you can certainly try this at home. Uh, and if we're interested, so it looks like the LED is working fine. It's a, a you know, reasonable reasonably bright. Um, it doesn't appear to be uh, you know, hot or drawing too much current. Nothing, nothing smells like it's burning, which is always, always a good sign. Um, but if you're interested to see just exactly how much voltage the LED is drawing, we can measure the voltage across it if you have a, if you have a voltmeter. Um, and any, any voltmeter will do. Um, I'll, use, I'll use this one, but you can use any, any voltmeter you have. And we'll just set it to uh, DC voltage and it says that it's measuring volts DC. Um, and first what I'll do is I'll measure the voltage across the entire circuit. So from this side uh, where, the, where the negative terminal is coming in from the battery to the positive terminal. And you see it says it's about 9 volts, which makes sense because we have a 9 volt battery. Um, now the resistor is supposedly dropping some voltage so that the LED operates with the appropriate voltage. And if we look at what the manufacturer says, um, the manufacturer, remember, said that this LED should have uh, between 1.9 and 2 volts. And it seems to be operating fine, so hopefully that's the voltage that it's getting. If not, then we need to kind of maybe look at, at maybe a different value for that resistor. But we'll, we'll see what, we'll see what we, we have. So if I look uh, at the voltage across this LED, I see 1.95 you know, or, or so volts, which is right, right in that range from 1.9 to 2 volts, which is, which is perfect and explains why the LED is working just fine. And just one more thing I'll measure is um, look at the voltage on the resistor. So from this side of the resistor to the other side, I see 7.12 volts, which makes sense. So the resistor is dropping 7.1 volts. The LED is dropping 1.95 volts. And the battery is providing 9 volts, which all makes sense. So if you have the battery is plus 9, the resistor is dropping 7.1, the LED is dropping 1.9, um, all of that together cancels out, and uh, we are obeying Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is that the, all of the voltage sources add to zero. Um, and so in this case, the battery is a positive voltage source, and then the drops across each component is a negative voltage source, and all of that adds to zero, which, which works out nicely. So this is a great way that you can build this circuit at home. Uh, another way that, that I actually really like is instead of using a battery, um, one of the things about batteries, of course, is that you know, they, they get used up, and you have to, have to buy new ones or recharge them. Um, so what I, what I find is convenient, and actually, let me make sure I disconnect this here so that we don't short this. and and damage the battery. <clears throat> what I find is convenient is these little USB chargers. So this plugs into the wall, of course, and it gives you USB. And USB has a 5 volt, um, a five volt DC uh, voltage available on it. And so you can use these things, which you probably might have around the house or you can get relatively inexpensively. 
um, and you can get five volts out of this. And just to double check, if we uh, if we take a close look at this, um, and you should check if you're using one of these, you should check the one you're using. But let me just take see if I can zoom in here. If we look very closely um, right here, it'll say input is 100 to 240 volts, uh, 50, 60 hertz at 0.15 amps, and that and that matches what what you would get from from the power source from the wall in in the U.S. or, or overseas or, or really any country, um, 100 to 240 volts. The output is five volts, and this little symbol here means means DC direct current, which is what we want, uh, one amp, uh, which is great. So five volts at, at up to one amp um, is what we get out of this. So in order to in order to use this we need to find some way to kind of plug into the other side of here and get the five volts out. And so a way to do that is to get an old USB cable or one that you don't you don't need or don't um, aren't using for anything else. And let me let me just zoom out here just a little bit more. Give us a little bit more room here. <clears throat> so this is just a USB cable and, and this end of course plugs into the wall adapter. And this other end is this is just like a, a mini USB. But what we want to do is plug into the breadboard. So this isn't going to plug in in here. Um, so what I can do is just, and again, this is obviously one that I'm not using for anything else, is I can just cut this off. And of course, don't do this while it's plugged in. Um, cut this off. And if I if I kind of dig into this um, sheath here, let me just kind of nip away at the outside sheath. And I'm being very careful not to cut the wires inside. So I'm just taking this little plastic sheath off, and let me let me zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. But what I've done is I'm I'm taking the the outside plastic off, and inside there's some shielding it looks like, and you may find something different when you take apart your USB cable. But inside there's some shielding, and inside of that there's some other little wires that we want to get at. So let me try to cut some of the shielding apart. Actually, it looks like there might be a little bit of plastic coating here. So let me get the plastic coating out of the way. And again, I'm not really sure what to expect here. Each, each cable is going to be made a little bit differently. But this one seems to have some little plastic coating and there's some, some stranded wire shielding that I'm just going to pull back for now. And then there appears to be some foil here as well. So I'll pull the foil back. And then inside we find we find a few conductors. We find a few a few wires here. And your USB cable might be constructed a little bit differently. You might have some different layers in here. Um, but you should find you should find four wires inside, just as I have here. And there's a there's a black, a red, and then a, a, in this case a, a green and a white. But what we're interested in is the black and the red, because the black and the red are the, uh, the positive and negative 5 volt uh, source. And then the, uh, the green and the white are used for data. If this USB were plugged into a computer, then you might want to send data across it, and that's what these are used for. Um, I would definitely not use your computer to power our, our experiment here because you could short something out and um, you know the worst case you could you could damage your computer and you don't want to do that so definitely only if you're gonna do this only power it through one of these little wall adapters because the worst case is you might damage the wall adapter but this is relatively inexpensive um, you don't want to risk damaging your computer so with that out of the way um, basically the next thing to do is just kind of get all this shielding out of the way and I'm just going to kind of get it all together here and cut it off because you don't want any of this. This is, they just put this in here to prevent, um, to prevent interference with the data signals, but we don't, we don't have any, we're not using this for data. And like I said, the you're interested in the in the red and the black because that's where the the five volt power is. The other conductors that are in here, we can actually just cut them off because we're not using them. 
And so I'm, I'm left with the red and the black, and I could, I could clean this up a little bit more. But uh, <clears throat> um, now what I want to do is strip the insulation off of these, and I'll use a little wire stripper here and strip the insulation off of the black, strip the insulation off of the red. And here I have here I have the uh, the red and the black, which should give me five volts. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and connect these into the breadboard. And so these are stranded, so they're a little bit finicky to get into the breadboard. But I'll twist it together. And the black again is the negative side of the of our power source, so I'll put that in here. Actually, this is getting a little bit finicky because it's stranded. I want to make sure all the little strands are twisted together so that when I put it in the breadboard, they all they all go in. So that's that. And then the red side, which is the positive side of our voltage, goes over here just like it did when we were using the laboratory power supply and just like we did when we were using the battery. And so that completes our circuit. So I'll zoom out here just to see what we have. And again, we've got we've got our circuit here, and now it's connected to this USB cable that I'm connecting. I'm going to go ahead and plug into the wall. And again, you could, well, you shouldn't plug this into your computer. Your computer will put out five volts, but I would definitely not do it because if if anything here is shorting or anything, you know, there's some other voltage that's coming in here. You, you could damage your computer, or you, you certainly risk uh, doing that, and it's just not worth that risk. Computers are, are kind of expensive. So I'm just going to plug this into the wall, and let me just reach down here, and it's plugged into the wall, and the LED came on, as you can see there. Um, and this is a great way to, uh, to power a circuit like this. And I'll just zoom back in so we can take a look at what we're doing. This is a great way to power a circuit like this. And again, we can kind of explore what's going on with the voltmeter. Uh, so like before, uh, we can measure the voltage across the entire uh, circuit, or really across the power source. In this case, we have 5 volts. Of course, with a 9-volt battery, we had 9 volts. But this is a 5-volt um, USB power source, so we're getting 5 volts. But that's still fine, because if we look across the LED, it's 1.91, a little bit less you know, which, which is kind of because we have a little bit less uh, voltage going in, but still like perfectly what that LED wants. Um, and then again, if we look across the resistor, we see the resistor is dropping the rest of the voltage. And so this is another great way to power, um, uh, uh, you know, an experiment like this. And I actually prefer this because when we start getting into digital logic, um, you'll see that five volts is, is typically the voltage we want to use for a lot of digital logic. Um, and so Setting up something like this, if, if you can, is a great way if you're going to um, start doing a bunch of projects with digital logic.